the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, let's acknowledge our sins to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you're the Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ of mercy. Christ Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Mighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal home. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans and camels shall fill you. Dromedaries for Midian and Ifa. All from Sheba shall come bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of our Lord. The word of our Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it is now has been revealed. In his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of the king Herod. Behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When king Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. Behold, the star that had been at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And upon entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. And they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. So this evening we celebrate the vigil of the Epiphany. So Epiphany means manifestation or showing. So this is showing how Christ is the long-awaited Messiah, the star represents the light of Christ, or the divine light as well. In the banner behind me, you can see above the tabernacle, we have the uh, kings and the shepherds. The shepherds represent the poor, and the three kings represent the Gentiles, the nations, the non Jewish people. It's showing that the Messiah has come not only for Israel, but for everyone. And so the new uh, criteria to be the chosen people is faith. Do you believe in Christ and you're chosen? And that's, a, that's the new criteria versus being born into uh, Israel, being an Israelite. 
And we have a lot of um, preconceptions that are not necessarily accurate about the theme for tonight, so I want to shed some light on that, so to speak, and get the light to start. Um, so, for example, the Bible doesn't say three kings, it just says the Magi. We presume it's three because there's three gifts, but it doesn't refer to them as kings, it just refers to them as Magi. So in, I think, the Eastern Rite of Orthodoxy, actually believe there's 12 Magi. And so that's a presumption that we just make, even our opening hymn says the three kings, but that's a presumption. The scripture doesn't say that, it just says the Magi. And so we're asked to realize that sometimes we kind of put into Bible stories what we want to, even though it's not there. And again, they represent the Gentiles. That's what's really most important. But if they were kings, it still works because Christ is a king as well. Remember what that sign above his head on the cross means from the Latin. Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. And so he is a king, but not the kind of king they were thinking of when they were expecting uh, a messiah, a new ruler that would free them from the Roman Empire. So all these things go into uh, tonight, reminding ourselves that we have a lot of preconceptions that may not be accurate. And certainly they bring uh, three gifts, which we'll get to in a moment. So I want to just give a little general formal background. The Gospel of Matthew is the only one of the four canonical Gospels to mention the Magi. Matthew reports that they came from the East to worship the King of the Jews. The Gospel never mentions the number of Magi. Still, most Western Christian denominations have traditionally assumed them to have been three in number based on the statement that they brought three gifts. In Eastern Christianity, especially the Syriac churches, the Magi often number 12. Their identification as kings in the later Christian writings is probably linked to Isaiah 60, 1-6, which refers to kings coming to the brightness of your dawn, bearing gold and frankincense. Further identification of the Magi with kings may be due to Psalm 72, may all kings fall down before him. And then we have, uh, even our tradition, we've added you even given them each a name. Uh, Melchior, a Persian scholar, Caspar or Gaspar, and Balthazar. And then we have the gifts. So all three gifts are ordinary offerings and gifts are given to a king. Myrrh being commonly used as anointing oil, frankincense as a perfume, and gold as a valuable. Three gifts had a spiritual meaning. Gold is a symbol of kingship on earth. Frankincense and incense as a symbol of being God or divine. And myrrh, an embalming oil, as a symbol of death. So it's a reminder that the wood of the manger leads to the wood of the cross. So even as a baby, that's what they're pointing out, that the uh, myrrh is reminding all those around him that Christ was born in order to die for us. And so it's already referring to his death at the happy moment of his birth. And of course, he's a king, but as I said, not a typical earthly king, but king of the universe. And then, and he is God. He's not just a human being, he's God, the God-man. And so they give him the uh, frankincense as a symbol of that. And we use incense, you know, at various masses, uh, usually lately funerals, and when the smoke is rising up, it symbolizes our prayers being rising up to God. And then there's um, additional symbolism. Sometimes this is described more generally as gold symbolizing virtue, frankincense symbolizing prayer, and myrrh symbolizing suffering. And then for us, I think, uh, you know, how do we connect to this story in our own lives? In 2022, I almost said 2021, in 2022, and you know, and I think if we could go back to some a simple uh, Christmas carol, the drummer boy, if you remember, he goes and he kind of feels uh, awkward. He doesn't have anything to give to the Christ child. And he ends up saying, I could just play my drum for you. 
That's my gift. And for us, I think the connection is that what God really wants from us is a gift to ourselves. And so he gave the gift of his talent to Christ. And so we're called to give the gift of ourselves. Uh, and that's turning ourselves over to his grace. And so this evening as we begin a new year, I mean, we have the goal and slash resolution of giving ourselves over to Christ and his grace. stand with the creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things is and what is visible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord the Father of all ages, God and God, light and light, to God and true God, begotten of the substantial of God, through him all things are made, so I present him our salvation, we know by the Holy Spirit, and the Lord of the Virgin Mary. Amen. For our sake, who is crucified in our country's time, he suffered death and is buried, he rose again the third day, and of course, the scriptures, he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to be by the dead, and his kingdom will not be my I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Holy Spirit, who proceeds in the Father and the Son. O the way of the Son is the Lord glorified, who has told me prophets. I believe in my holy Catholic baptism of the church. I confess the baptism and forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the Lord of God. Amen. Gathered as one, let us bring to light the needs and concerns of our community this day. For the church. May the Holy Spirit continue to uphold there as a place of refuge for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all nations, may peace and prosperity be upon them, and the Lord deliver them from any oppression. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who are buried by hatred and violence, may Christ open their hearts to compassion and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for new parents in this faith community, may the Holy Spirit bless them with wisdom, patience, and love as they begin their parenting journey. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick and all who suffer, may the Holy Spirit restore them to fullness of life and health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for those who have died, may they soon Offer homage to the Lord while gazing upon his holy face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I am our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Especially as we begin a new year. We pray for the intention of this Mass to the parishioners of St. Isaac Job's. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I am our prayer. God of all nations, you sent your Son to save us from sin and death. Hear and answer our prayers this day. We ask this in Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Our hymn for the presentation of the gifts is number 96. It came upon a midnight clear. 96.
endures with acceptable God the one who follows. And the Lord accepts sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the all of his holy church. So we pray, O Lord, our offerings in honor of the appearing of your only begotten Son, and the first fruits of the nations, that to you praise may be rendered, and eternal salvation be ours, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift up the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Let's right and justice. Let's live right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Today, you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ to light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, he made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. So, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory at the end we proclaim. <laughs> Graciously accept the, this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and demand that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those who have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray. Bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it will become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread into his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which must be given up for you. In a similar way, with several ways ended, he took this precious chalice into his holy and venerable hands. Once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Thank 
said in the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we are servants, your holy people, all for your glorious majesty, and the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as what you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, the offering of your priest of Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of the holy angel of your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, that all of us, who through the participation of the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, to be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us in the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Bless also your servants, and those sinners, for we are abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share of knowledge of the holy apostles and martyrs of John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, bestow them. We will give we have to you, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Sin and sinful we'll distress through the week of blessed hope, and we have our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your Son. Lord Jesus Christ, through your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins and the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. to receive communion single file space with those receiving on the tongue end of line middle aisle
is number 108, the first Noel. 108. virtually an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are most present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. We implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds, that our true treasure may ever consist in our confession of you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I wish everyone a happy new year. Uh, hopefully 2022 will be better than 2021, better than 2020. It could get worse, right? Well, I shouldn't say that out loud. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Yes. 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 Down and pray for God's blessing. God, who has called you out of darkness into his own wonderful light, pour out in kindness.
kindness is blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. Amen. And since in all confidence you followed Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in the darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy and with light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessing Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel. As we go forth, let's join together in singing number eight zero, Joy to the World. Eight zero. <laughs> Thank you. 